Greetings. Here we have lamb's quarter, also called goosefoot or white goosefoot, also called fat hen. In some locations, they call it pigweed or pig's ear, which is not to be confused with other plants like amaranth, which is called pigweed or pig's ear. But lamb's quarter is also considered a member or a relative of the amaranth family. Scientific name for lamb's quarter is Kinopodium album, and there are really two species that you'll most likely come across. It'll be the Kinopodium album or the Kinopodium giganteum, which is the, it's not necessarily any bigger than the album species or variety, but it is just magenta in color instead of white in color. And an ancient name for Lamb's Quarter is said to be called All Good because it was good for many uses and it tastes good. And it is prized among wild foods by many foragers who hunt it every year. Lamb's Quarter contains more iron, more protein, more calcium, vitamin B1 and B2, phosphorus, vitamin C, and vitamin A than both cabbage or spinach. Lamb's Quarter has been said to be once the most valued vegetable for human beings and fodder for their animals. Some historians even record it as being used regularly by the Romans. A single plant can produce at least 75,000 seeds per season. That's right, 75,000 seeds one plant so if you see some this year leave only a few healthy plants to go to seed and you can come back year after year the shape of the leaves and the way that it looks in a way like it was sprinkled with powder is what gives it away the shape of the leaves are akin to that of a goose's foot they have been likened to a goose's foot, which is why Campodium album is called White Goosefoot. And the powder is the most noticeable part on the underside of the leaves as the plant gets older and matures. It repels water and is hydrophobic, but this waxy coating disappears when you cook it. The leaves themselves are bluish green, delicate to the touch, and the stem is fleshy and tender when young. And this waxy coating, you will see that if you rub it between your fingers gently, it comes off. And if we notice the stems of lamb's quarter, the stems are ribbed. And at the joints of the stem where it branches off, it has a red or purplish color. And though it may look like there is hair, there is absolutely no hairs on lamb's quarters. But these are the waxy crystals. Tiny, tiny waxy crystals. And if it makes 75,000 seeds, it probably makes a million of these waxy crystals. This plant, similar to the wood sorrel, which we've covered, is said to also be high in oxalic acid. And there are some who have concerns about oxalic acid, but oxalic acid is found in many foods that we eat regularly, like almonds, chocolate, bananas, parsley, beer, and spinach. And it is found in considerably high levels in those foods. Oxalic acid is also formed in the body, which is sourced and created from vitamin C, amino acids, and other sources. And it is estimated that of all the oxalic acid in our bodies, food sources account for only 10 to 15% of the oxalic acid in our body at any given time. Oxalic acid is worth mentioning because it combines mostly with iron and calcium, which limit the absor absorption of these nutrients and minerals. When combined with calcium, it can create oxalate crystals, which manifest in the form of kidney stones, gout, and rheumatoid arthritis. 
In some people, though, poisonings from food sources of oxalic acid are very rare. The same ones who have trouble with oxalates will also have problems with high amounts of vitamin C as it converts itself to oxalic acid. And though some believe that oxalic acid can be cooked out, a study from September 1st, 2003 titled Effect of Domestic Processing and Cooking on Selected Anti-Nutrient Contents of Some Leafy Green Vegetables shows that this is not the case. But it did show that blanching, which is scalding vegetables in boiling water or steam for a short amount of time from like one minute to five minutes and disposing of the water, rinsing the leaves off with cold water, leaches out roughly one third of the oxalic acid of the whole plant. Lamb's quarter can, can be treated and eaten in every way as you would do spinach, except with more nutrients even to be used in dips and pesos or as a side of nutritious greens on your meal. It can also be dried if you have a dehydrator or collected and hung upside down and allowed to dry over time naturally and it can be ground up and sprinkled on your food. This would add nutrients to your food and it would also give it a bit of flavor. And on the flavor of lamb's quarter, if you are a fan of collard greens or turnip greens, then you will probably also be a fan of lamb's quarter. It can also be mixed with other wild greens like garlic mustard and dandelion. And it is not bitter itself, so it would help a little bit and add some substance to those bitter plants. Medicinally, raw leaves can be chewed into a green paste and applied on the body to make a poultice for insect bites, minor scrapes, cuts, injuries and inflammation, and even sunburn. So in the fashion of like curing like, we also find lamb's quarter is also noted for being used topically to provide some relief to arthritic joints, where in high doses, it may cause these issues by way of oxalates in some individuals. Tea made from the leaves can ease stomach problems, and eaten raw, they can help with anemic blood issues. But if you would eat too many leaves raw due to the waxy coating on them, it may upset your stomach a little bit. And I have eaten them raw, just not a ton of them in handfuls and had no issues. But if you have a history of stomach issues, you may want to limit the amount of raw lamb's quarter leaves that you consume. In modern times, some have taken to use the tender young leaves and green juices to help with cleansing the body of toxins. Though, in the case of detoxing or having a detoxing effect, it may come from the high levels of minerals available, which aid the body and improve the immune system over time, or it may come from the iron content that is available in the lamb's quarter which iron is a mineral that would allow your blood to hold more oxygen and more oxygen in the body it goes through and cleanses the cells the roots of lamb's quarter contain saponins which can make a soapy foam and it can be used as a cleaning agent boiled into a tea Lamb's quarter roots can also be drank and used as a cleansing laxative. It is also important to know that there are some studies that have taken place also showing that lamb's quarter is antiparasitic and it is antiparasitic for quite a few different types of worms, parasites, amoeba that would harm you. There are some toxic lookalikes to beware of which are in the nightshade family. This genius, the nightshade, is under solanum, and that would be the hairy nightshade, the black nightshade, and the silver nightshade, which can be confused with this. There would be solanum nigrum, solanum americanum, and solanum tycanthum. There are also other species of solanum, but none of these have any 
waxy coating on them. And as the name Harry Nightshade suggests, some have hairs. And in the case of Silverleaf Nightshade, it also has thorns on the stem. Nightshade family plants also tend to grow a round fruit that seems to be grasped by, by the leaf top at the stem. Like eggplants, tomatoes, these are in the nightshade family. And you see how the how it's kind of grasped and held from the top by the plant that it grows on. When on the other hand, lamb's quarter has no hairs and it has the reddish purplish tint at the joint. It's covered in wax. It's hydrophobic. You can pour water on it and it'll just beat up or run off. And it grows no little fruits, but instead it grows a ton of seeds, which can also be eaten or ground into a flower or used like other cereals to make a type of gruel or meal that can be boiled and eaten. Well, that's been Lamb's Quarters. Hope it's been informative. Peace. If you have any existing health concerns, take that into consideration. If you are taking any medications at this time, take that into consideration and allow a two to three hour window before consuming plants medicinally. Do not take anything that you are not sure of or that you have not properly identified. If you have any further concerns, do not consume the plant. If you would like to know what other medical implications may come about from going back to a more natural life, to a more traditional lifestyle, after you have properly identified and know the uses of plants thoroughly and you are still concerned, of course, consult your local drug dealing doctor. Oja, how excellent is thy name in all the world. How manifold are thy works set right in all the world. Out of the mouths of babes and sucklings are thou a deep strength to steal the enemies and the avenger.